Welcome to Output PDX, the show about business, technology, and creativity in the Bridge City. Today we're talking to Catherine Brown, who is the founder and CEO of Scout Savvy, which is an organization that uh, brings diversity into the tech field. So it's really exciting to talk to you today. Can you tell me what got you into this? Yeah, that's a great question. So I am a software developer and I was working for a local agency here in town and I was working closely with the founder to help him get more connected into the women in tech scene here in Portland. I'm really active with Women Who Code PDX. Oh, yes, um, I've heard of that. Yeah. Love them. Uh, Chick Tech mm -hmm. and also PDX Women in Tech. Nice. So I was socializing with other women in the software field and a lot of companies and a lot of recruiters and people that I talked to were saying, I really want to hire more women, I just can't find them. So, uh, and you're like, here they are. Yes, they yes. Um, as a true uh, engineer and in the spirit of uh, DIY here in Portland, I said, hey, let's solve this problem. Mm -hmm. So, about a year ago, I decided to start working on Scout Savvy, which is a, a technology platform for diversity recruiting, and we make recruiting simple and fair. So you're basically, um, it's like a site for job posting um, as well as, uh, so we can use it on, on the end of like a person looking for a job as well as a person wanting to post things, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So about a year ago, I launched a very small job board for women in technology. Um, I built it on WordPress mm -hmm. and it was in the typical lean startup methodology. Build something in a week, put it out there, yeah. see if people care about it mm -hmm. uh, before you spend a year of your life working on this. And the demand was really amazing. Mm -hmm. So I got to work with an intern and we started building uh, the very first version of Scout Savvy, uh, which is an enterprise um, software as a service app. So companies can come on, create a profile, list all of their jobs, and then um, people can come on, upload their resume, and we would provide a matching algorithm. Nice. Um, so that was an early version of Scout Savvy. It was very popular, but you know, as much as I like to think I can do everything, just a woman <laughs> yeah. out there in the world with my software, uh, I really needed some help. So I partnered with a local agency called Knuckleheads, and uh, we got to work over the past six months completely rebuilding the platform. So in March 2017, we're going to be releasing a web app, an iPhone app, and an Android app. Nice. And we have a matching algorithm. So if you are a job seeker, you can come onto the platform and tell us where you've been. So for example, your job history, your educational history, mm -hmm. and where you're going. What you want out of your next job, what you want out of your next company. Uh, what benefits you want, and the type of work environment that you want. And then we match you with the best jobs at the best companies for you. That's fantastic. So it goes beyond just kind of listing what's available, and it really helps you find what is the actual best match. Correct. Nice. Yes. That's cool. Yes. And we've built a lot of uh, diversity features in, into the app. For example, um, statistically, women will only apply for jobs when they um, can fit 100% of the requirements, mm -hmm. and men statistically will apply if they hit 60% of the requirements. So I really believe that um, showing people the matches for the jobs rather than having them search and edit themselves um, really empowers people to look at the app and say, oh, hey, I was actually matched with this senior management position. I didn't think that I would be good enough for that. But not only am I matched with it, but the recruiter from this company has actually invited me to apply. Nice. So you're getting past that barrier of people self-selecting themselves out of things because they think, oh, I'm probably not the best fit. Correct. Nice. Yes. And on the company side, we actually have a feature called blind recruiting. So um, you can search in our database, for example, a senior level JavaScript developer in Portland, and we serve you a list of results. We don't show the image or the name of the person um, and you can click to invite them to apply for that job. Mm -hmm. So that really helps people get over the unconscious bias that we all have. Yeah, yeah, and, and we know that that exists. We've seen lots of studies that even, you know, the best intentioned people still tend to have some bias when they look at what is the name, what is the picture associated with this resume. Correct. So that's really cool that you have that kind of ability to go in and just assess the person's uh, skills. Correct. That. Correct. That's cool. Yes. What do you think um, is the reason that the tech industry in specific became sort of this place where there aren't enough women, there aren't enough people of color, there's not enough diversity in this field. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of theories on, on why that happened? Yeah, it's definitely um, 
a cultural progression. And you know, early in computer science, it was viewed as secretarial work. It was, coding was viewed as women's work. Right. But so, women were actually called computers, right? The job description was you are a computer. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I'm 32. I'm a child of the 80s. And in the 1980s in America, um, tech, working with technology and and becoming an early programmer actually came out of the video game culture and it was heavily marketed toward young boys. Mm -hmm. So women of my age, yes, we grew up playing Nintendo. Super Mario 1 is still the best of all time. Oh, I totally agree. Yes, uh, <laughs> but for people who are in my age group, it was heavily marketed um, to young boys mm -hmm. and that continuum as we've entered into our college programs, entering into the workforce, um, that divide has continued to happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is a cultural progression. And the good news is that um, culturally we can work on reversing that and making it um, a viable and exciting career option for everybody. Right. Do you think the culture is shifting now? Because I feel like it is mm -hmm. towards, you know, there are a lot more video games marketed towards young girls and women. And there is a lot more kind of consciousness growing around the fact that, yeah, women are interested in this stuff. Mm -hmm. we, we love geeking out on it, too. Absolutely. Yeah, it's changing on, on two levels. First, there are more women in uh, powerful roles within the technology industry right now, uh, for example. Sheryl Sandberg at Facebook. Yeah. So now we can see women uh, presenting at large technical conferences um, with a very feminine gender identity. Uh, we can see them making massive decisions. We can see them as CEOs. We can see them as directors of engineering. So I think that's important to have role models who are in those positions of power and technology. So young girls and young women can look at them and say, hey, I see myself. Mm -hmm. I can be this. Uh, and secondly, um, there's a really big culture of reaching back and saying, okay, if we want more women in the pipeline, we have to start teaching young girls now that not only is it cool uh, to be a coder and to be interested in computers, um, you can express your gender any way that you want to. So you can be a very feminine person and, you know, there's a great startup out of New York City, and they're teaching girls how to code using friendship bracelets. Oh, really? Yes. Nice. Yeah. So they have an interface, they program, and then the friendship bracelets uh, light up in different patterns uh, compared to, you know, how they how they program them. Yeah. So I think it's very important to share the message to say, you know, no matter what your gender is, no matter what your sex is, no matter what your gender identity is, mm -hmm. there is a place for you. In technology. Yeah. Do you think that um, Portland is kind of a good fertile ground to plant this, you know, seed of your startup to, um, I guess, speak to these social issues, or, or yeah. do you think there's something unique about this city that, that gives you the opportunity to do that? Totally. Yeah. Um, I think there are three things that are very unique that are really helping push this along. Um, first, we have a tradition of DIY here in Portland. And this is one thing that I, I grew up on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And when I was a teenager, I was listening to Riot Girl music in my bedroom and <laughs> dreaming about coming to Portland to drink coffee and change the world. And, and you're doing that now. You're drinking coffee and changing the world. I am. I am. <laughs> I'm going to go back and tell my 16-year-old self. It all turns out OK. Right. Um, so we have a spirit of DIY. If we see a problem, we don't need somebody's permission to fix it. We go and do it. Um, Second, we have a history of social action. So in Portland, we're very concerned with uh, making a difference in the world. And third, our proximity to Silicon Valley, San Francisco, and Seattle. We have an amazing tech corridor here, and we can draw on the money and technical talent coming up and down the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So I think that having those three elements together really make this an amazing place to um, launch a startup that has a social mission mm -hmm. and make it successful and profitable and also help the community become more successful as well. Mm -hmm. If you had um, one message either as Scout Savvy or just as yourself to kind of give to the Portland tech world, what would that be? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would say I have two messages. One is for everybody 
who's out there with a dream. <laughs> um, I think technology is very empowering. And there are so many low cost ways that you can get into this industry and really change the world. So it doesn't matter if you're passionate about animal adoption or you're passionate about organic food or if you're passionate about skateboarding or coffee or film production. Um, you can really take your passion and really elevate that and create something that, that changes the lives of people. Mm -hmm. And you can do that through technology. So um, there are many uh, scholarships that are available. There are many free fellowships that are available for women and people of color and people from marginalized communities. So um, there is no economic barrier for people getting into this industry. And I just want everyone to know that um, this is a fabulous place to be. And I just want them to get involved in this career path. Nice. Mm -hmm. And you know, the second message I would have would be for Portland companies in the greater community. Uh, I think that Portland companies need to uh, look at their bottom line and say, hey, we have a tremendous opportunity in the city to make an impact not only socially, but to grow our economy and, and really rival Silicon Valley and offer things that um, San Francisco can't offer. So let's talk about how we can all work together um, to create something really special here. Well, I'm excited to see what you do with this. And you've gotten me actually stoked about this. I'm like, should I start to learn to code? <laughs> Maybe I will. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's great talking to you today. Yeah, nice to talk to you too. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's it for this episode of Output PDX. We'll see you next time.